Hey, uh, John and Pete, are either one of you guys Swifties? Did you uh, did you try and get tickets for Taylor Swift last week? <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, I saw that it just wasn't going to be possible unless I had 12 large burning a hole in my is pocket. That, is so that all? I, I okay. Decided yeah. Yes. I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I would go see Taylor Swift live. I, I, I've heard she's an amazing performer, and, and I did try to sign up for the, the pre-sales, but, uh, but I didn't even get a I – was, I was waitlisted for the pre-sale. I'm sure uh, that if, if you are interested at all, and probably even if you aren't interested at all in this, you've heard all of the stories – about how uh, how that presale went super sideways, and uh, you know the Ticketmaster and T- Taylor Swift, and there's all that stuff going on. And I say I'm sure you've heard all the stories. We're not going to retell those, but I think there's probably one that you didn't hear. And I dug into this because as soon as I heard this story, I was like, "Wait a minute, what happened here?" The whole idea behind the Ticketmaster presale and why you have to sign up for a code in advance and all of that stuff. And trust me, I'm going somewhere nerdy with this. Just bear with me. I know it's a rabbit hole. Sorry. Uh, but but we're, we're going somewhere fun. The whole idea is because they know that there's going to be huge demand for this. And they want to make sure that the, you know, the verified fans, that's what they call this, the Ticketmaster verified fan presale. The verified fans are have a shot at getting tickets. And the way this verified fan presale thing works is you buy the tickets and then you have to be the one to use them. Uh, it, it, you know, you, whatever, like you, you, you can maybe you can buy four tickets. You have, you, you know, you have to be one of the people, the person that with the credit card has to be the one that shows up at the, at the thing. And then, uh, and then you can bring, you know, your three other people with you as, as you might expect. So, you with that in mind, and I go to a lot of concerts, as many of you know, and I'm well aware of how this system works and how it all is. And I, you know, I like that part of the idea. Ticketmaster scammy and 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 creepy, and they have their own like hidden secondary resale market, which they probably shouldn't be allowed to have. But anyway, they do this, which is great. Uh, so you're saying you can't show up with 300 of your closest friends. Uh. To the, yeah. to the concert. Yeah. <laughs> right. Nor could I buy in in a normal verified fan presale. If I bought tickets, I couldn't even give all of them to you, Pete. I would have to join you and and attend, or somehow you would have to impersonate me enough to get yourself in the door. Now, what a lot of scalpers scalpers will do is they will buy four tickets and resell three. Uh and w- literally walk you into the venue. And then once you're in, they leave and walk the next three people for whom they bought tickets in. Right. Like this is a known practice. And as long as their markup on it is enough to give them a profit after covering their cost of four tickets, even though they're only selling reselling three. Fine. Right. And OK, fine. So that's the scalpers way around it. All of this is important as background because when I heard it was on ABC start here, they, they did a little dive into this, which is great uh, podcast. Uh, Brad Melke's funny and does a good job. Uh, and they said, yeah, the big problem, the reason people were waiting hours and hours in this verified fan presale, which should have been a managed quantity was because it wasn't just people. It was bots getting through. And I was like, well, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. The whole idea behind the verified fan presale is that you get a code texted to your phone. Like, it, it prevents bots from getting through. What do you mean bots got through? So I dug into it and sure enough, like th- they generally, they don't, they know how many verified fans they have offered tickets to. And that is, or offered the opportunity to purchase to, right? Which is an important distinction. They, that is how they manage how many tickets are going to be sold through the verified fan presale. And and, and then they have a general on sale, which should be more tickets. So it's usually somewhere between 20 and maybe 40 percent of the tickets are reserved for the verified fan presale. And then the rest are, you know, out there. But they don't know, A, if those people that that have the verified fan are going to buy and B, they don't know how many tickets they cap them at four. But they know that not everybody is going to buy four. And sometimes they cap them at eight, like, what you know, whatever the, the limit for that on sale is. But that's how they manage how many tickets are going to be sold. They don't reserve a, a fixed number of tickets for the verified fan presale. And that's an important, another important distinction because 
ABC start here mentioned the bots and I'm like, okay, bots, that's that, that's the first little flag that went up for me. And the second flag was, they said, yeah. And now they can't do the on sale because 95% of all the tickets have already been sold through the pre-sale. And what happened was the, uh, the bot writers, we'll call them the bot makers, uh, had figured out how to bypass the verified fan pre-sale. So not only was it the verified fans trying to get in, but it was people who did not even have verified fan codes that somehow had figured out how to get past the system. And this comes as absolutely no surprise to us. <clears throat> John, you and I came up in a time where people were vendors, software vendors were using copy protection on software, literally using uh, writing different ways of preventing people from copying the the bits of the software to another disc, right? You would get your software on a floppy disk and, and they would prevent you from copying that disc, even to make your own legitimate backup, right? That you might want to store at a friend's house. Uh, <clears throat> that finally ended though, because it was just a game of cat and mouse, right? Like the, the vendors would come up with a new way of doing things. The, the people that were breaking the copy protection would figure that out and it would just go back and forth. On this one, I think what happened is that the bot makers suckered Ticketmaster. I think they figured out a while back how to bypass the verified fan presale. And I think they waited until they knew they had a sure thing in terms of being able to sell for those prices. Like you mentioned, Pete, 12 grand. Yeah. I saw some yeah. for $90,000, right? But yeah. people are... <clears throat> And I think if you rewind back a couple of months, Bruce Springsteen tickets went on sale. There was a minor issue with the verified fan presale. I think they used that as a test run. Uh, I, yeah. This is all yeah. my tinfoil hat rabbit hole theories here. But yeah. like, I think Ticketmaster got baited into thinking that this game, that they had won this game. Their brick wall was up and impenetrable. That's right. And as soon as you think that, you know you're wrong. You should know you're wrong. Yeah. Right? I mean, doesn't this sound like the whole copy protection days, John? Just the, the cat and mouse stuff? I don't know. That's, so that's do how you it. think they figured out the algorithm to generate a, a useful code? Oh, that's one way. I, I That is not what I thought. But I, there's, I mean, I don't know. So, yeah, that would make sense.